Let me do it. Great. So we are now live. Thank you for waiting, guys. Sorry that we're a bit late. We had some technical issues. Um, <laughs> my name is Sylvie Hall and I'm the social media team here at um, invoice to go on the social media team and I'm joined today by Parisa Gonzalez who's our lead product manager and today we are going to show you two time-saving tips for your invoice to go app. Um, Parisa would you like to give yeah. us a demonstration of how to save mm. time? No worries thanks Sylvie so I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and healthy um, so, as Sylvie said, I'm going to demo two time-saving tips to you all. Um, and the first one is around payments and the second one is about the ability to be able to export your invoices in bulk. So, what I'll do is I'll start with payment reminders. So, I'm going to just quickly start sharing my screen, just it'll be straight off my phone. So, just so um, everyone knows, I'm using um, my iPhone. Uh, let me just get through this. Let me know if you can see. Oh, one second. Hopefully that should work. All right, let me try that one more time. Here it is, it's still loading. <laughs> uh, there we go. Can you see Perfect. that now? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So as I mentioned, payment reminders. So cash flow obviously is an important factor to all business, especially small business. So um, using our payment reminders feature will really help um, help you get paid faster and do it with little ongoing effort. So it's kind of like a set and forget feature almost. Um, and the idea is to basically configure it um, to your liking. Um, and then basically the reminders will then look after themselves. So what I'll do now is I'll show you how it actually works. So it's pretty simple. So the first thing um, we're going to want to do in the app. So you go on the home screen on the app um, and you will enter the hamburger menu. So it's, it'll be hard for you to see because it's not, it won't show you my touch, but I'm going to go to the top left hand corner and touch those three lines at the at that top left hand corner, which we refer to as the hamburger menu. So I'm going to touch on that and you'll see our navigation, our side navigation menu. And if you scroll in down to settings, click on settings, and then go into client communication. In climate, client communication, you'll see a variety of options, but the one you want to pick is the one that reads payment reminders. So we're going to go ahead and select payment reminders. And then in my setting, I've already turned it on, as you can see. So if you hadn't turned it on, it'll look like that. But then as soon as the minute you turn it on, by default, it will turn on all the various options. So on this screen, you'll have the option to configure um, how you want the scheduling. There's a variety of options. You can see that um, you can see that you've got the option for three days before the due date for to get payment reminders sent to your clients on the due date, three days after the due date, and seven days after the due date as well. So there's a number of options for you to pick. And if you wanted to see a preview, if you'd press the send me a preview link down the bottom, it will send you an email to show you what it looks like. But I've got mine, um, I already know what it looks like, so I'm not gonna go have a look yet. I'm going to jump right back out. As soon as you jump out, that will keep those settings and it will save them for you. So I'm going to jump all the way back out. And then I'm going to show you, go back to home, and I'm going to show you now how to utilize that within the invoice. So what I just did, set it up as a global setting for, for every invoice that you will start. It will allow you to, it will basically have it on by default. Then I'll show you within each invoice how to further kind of manipulate that if you want. So I'm going to jump into an invoice. I'm just going to touch the add invoice button on the top here and we're going to just um, and create an invoice together and just see how it looks. So the first thing you want to do is add your client. So obviously it's very important to, to add a client if you want to send payment reminders. So I'm going to just create a new client just to show you from scratch what it might look like. So I'm just going to type in a name here and we will go ahead and use Jane Smith. Oh. There we go. And I guess what it's important here to really to, to know is that you have to enter an email address. So I'm going to just type in my email address. And then 
you know, that's pretty much all you need to do in terms of the information. At the minimum, you'll need the name and their email address. Now you'll notice here, you'll see this payment reminders little switch. Now, because I had turned it on globally, it will automatically be turned on for every invoice that you do to for a client. If you wanted to, of course, um, you don't have to have it on for every client. So you can actually turn it off per invoice as well. And all you, all you would do is just turn off that switch and that's it. So I'm gonna leave mine on. I'll save those changes. And now Jane Smith's added to my invoice. Let me just drop in an item. So I'll just drop in a full day consult, $300. I've got the details I need. I'm just gonna save that. And now I've got my item in there, my service item. And the other thing you can, that's kind of tightly coupled with payment reminders is the due date. So obviously you can see the due date just here. I'm gonna tap on it and you can pick um, the due date of your invoice. So if I put seven days, it's a seven day term. So on the 12th of June, this invoice is, that, that invoice will be due. Um, and then that's pretty much all I'm gonna do for this invoice, real nice and quick. I'm gonna go next. And that's probably saved my invoice and it's ready for me to action it, post the creation. So I can send it and do a variety of things. So I'm going to go ahead and press the send button and I'm going to send it. So, and I'm going to do that by email. So I'm going to select email. That's going to shoot up my uh, Gmail uh, account and allow me to send that invoice. So you can have a look. And basically, once you've sent that invoice, from that time the invoice is sent, the payment reminder system will in, our, in the back end will kick in. So... If you had then configured um, your uh, due date to be the next day, then all the configurations were kicking. So I would get, if I had set um, payment reminders to show on the due date of the invoice, I would get a reminder on that due date. So what I will do, I'm going to stop sharing my phone and I'll show you what the email actually looks like to give you a good idea. Give me one moment. I'm just going to show you my desktop with my, with my email. Give me one minute. Screen. Give it two minutes. Right, here we are. Now I just need to find you all again. There we are. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen again. So we're able to see my screen. Um, it's saying it started screen sharing, but I can't see anything yet. Okay. Let me try that one more time. see it now what do you see <laughs> um your slack <laughs> oh okay there we go <laughs> wonderful all right so now that we're back in business i will show you how those emails look like so let me just jump into my inbox and hopefully i'm on the right yeah i'm on the right account so you'll see that i've got the invoice that i sent i actually created one before so you can see down the bottom here, I've got an, the actual invoice I sent. I happen to send it to myself just to, for demo purposes. And then you can see that, um, so I sent, I sent it on, the May, on May 31st. And now you can see the variety of reminder emails I, I got sent. So I got one sent on the due date and then three post that to, to, to me as the client that my invoice is now um, pretty much overdue. So. Um, I'll show you what the contents of them look like. So you can see here, basically it's just saying, you know, a reminder that this much is due and they can use the, the portal to make that payment. And the other ones there look very much similar as well. So you can just see, it's just essentially a reminder. And all this happens in the background. So you don't need to worry about um, manually going ahead and sending that. So, so yeah, so that is the payment reminder feature, which is very, very handy to help with cash flow and make sure you get paid and your invoices don't lapse and age too, for too long. The other thing I want to show you, and I'm going to switch to our web app. So as you may all know, is that we, our platforms run on iOS, we run on Android, and we also run on the web. And on the web, we have this very kind of handy feature um, called for exporting your invoices. So, and I'll explain what that purpose what the various purposes for using that um, could be so I'm just going to show you first where it is so if you have a look on the side menu here if you go into settings and come down to export 
it's hidden right there for you. So you press export. And basically you have the option of exporting your invoices, your estimate, credit memos, purchase orders, expenses, items, clients, time tracking and appointments. So essentially I'm gonna stay focused on the invoices. So what this feature is really handy for is, for example, if, you're, if you need to put in your invoices into an accounting package or your accountant needs to put them into an invoice package, um, instead of manually sending each invoice to your, to your accountant or yourself having to manually input each invoice separately into your accounting package, you can actually export um, all your invoices in a, essentially export it into a comma delimited te uh, text file, which you can then open up in any spreadsheet um, tool, for example, Google Sheets, uh, Microsoft Excel, um, whatever it is that you use for spreadsheets. I'll show you very quickly and it's super, super simple. Um, there's really nothing to it. So I'm going to select invoices as I suggested from this drop down box on the export screen in the web app. I'm going to literally press the export invoices button. And what it says here is that, okay, your invoices export is on its way. So it's going to go into my inbox and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is one again I did before. So you can see here you get an email that says your export is ready. All you need to do is literally press download. And what that will do is basically you can see it downloads a zip file. And you basically grab that zip file, open it and grab the contents, which is that file I was explaining to you. And then you can basically yourself or your accountant can import it, open it and import it to any tool. So I'll show you what it looks like very quickly. The, and I guess the different things you need, like depending on your accounting package, you can pick which obviously which fields you want to import, but you can look at, you can see the, the document status. Um, you can also see um, the price and the invoice number and things like that as well. So that would be very handy to import the currency. There's a variety of things that would be very relevant and useful for you to import into your accounting package. And that can be all done in one go versus having to do it one by one. So, that, so I think that that's it, Sylvie. Two, two little um, handy features that, the, that we have on the app that can be used. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Parisa. No we, we actually have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, sure. would, um, I'll read them out to you. Um, so guys, Parisa um, handles one part of the product team. So if she doesn't have the answer, then mm -hmm. we will make sure that the person who is responsible for that part of the app can answer your questions. Yeah. Um, so the first question was from Justin Childs and he said, we want time tracking by location. When will it come back? And it used to work with the Apple Watch as well. Is okay. that something that you handle? Um, not at the moment, but um, what I would suggest is if you do have any feedback or, um, you know, questions about what what's working and what's not and what you want to see in the product, there is, a, on our support page, there is definitely a way for you to send through feedback requests and we do look at them all the time um, and we'll prioritise them accordingly. But yeah, definitely please go ahead and do that. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Justin. Um, Cy Carter says, can you request a deposit without adding PayPal or card details? At the moment, uh, you cannot. You, it's essentially, um, it's tied into those online payments. So the, the beauty of that feature is to be able to take that deposit um, without a lot of fuss. And that will allow you to do that without having to chase and your, you, and your end client will be able to make that payment very easily. But again, um, if that's something that is of interest and of uh, a sticking pain point for you and for, for any reason that you are unable to enable those payments, but which, I, which I encourage everyone to because they are very handy and they, we have seen significant feedback um, and numbers on how much it does improve um, payments being made and being made on time. Just shoot through similar to my other, my other feedback is to def definitely jump on our support page and just send us through some feedback. Yeah, great, thank you. And then Sandy Kathleen says, a lot of our clients like to give us checks. Can we make mm -hmm. that an elective? Um, you definitely can. Um, what I would suggest, because different, um, different businesses prefer to take payment in different forms, um, the best way to probably do that is to put that in your payment instructions on the invoice. And you can set that as a global thing so it's again another set and forget you set it and say 
you know, please pay by check. And that will come up on every invoice um, or every estimate that you send down. So, and make it kind of super clear to your customers. Thank you so much. Um, we've had a couple of compliments as well. Justin Argent says he's used the app since 2012 and it's a very valuable part of his business. And um, Jason Lee said that he just started using the invoicing app and he's finding it really useful. So oh. thank you for that great feedback, guys, as well. Um, yeah. Cy Carter said that his clients pay by bank transfers and their payments take too long to receive. Um, so yeah, thank you for your suggestions. We really value all this feedback and um, it's mm -hmm. great that you ask them as part of these lives and you can obviously have the opportunity to speak to our product team directly. Um, and we do want you to make all the suggestions that you have. Um, please do leave us some feature requests as Carissa mentioned. Um, we do want to improve the app to make it work as best as we can for you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time today, Parisa. Um, no worries. Really handy. This will be live in all our Facebook groups, so you can all watch it back if you want to have a replay and see the handy tips again. And we'll be coming back um, with some more app tips um, with the product team over the next couple of months too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.